When it comes to non-binary people in history, I feel there is one name that crops up relatively often when looking through the history books. The public universal friend. So today I'd like to talk about the friend and how I believe the PUF influenced our view of gender. The near-death experience of one Quaker touched many people and is one of the earlier examples of non-binary and or genderless individuals in history. I'm going to stop here briefly to say that many accounts of the life story of this individual uses a dead name and incorrect pronouns. On this channel, I aim not to misgender people, so I will be using the terms that this person approved, which means I will not be using pronouns or the friend's birth name for any referral. Previous to the friend's coming out, I will refer to the friend as the person or by their last name, Wilkinson. I believe this cuts a well enough balance between the friend's previous life and then as the friend. Now, on to how this whole genderless situation appeared. First, let's go back to the mid-1700s. The person was born in Rhode Island to a Quaker family in 1752. The person grew up with a love of animals and reading, and was quite athletic according to the records of the time. It was known that Wilkinson regularly attended local meetings of Quakers, also known as the Religious Society of Friends. Wilkinson eventually tried out a different religion with the Light Baptists, and in doing so, membership was withdrawn from the Quaker house previously attended. It was then found that the Light Baptists wasn't the right religion at the time either for Wilkinson, and the person went away from that, leaving the person to be a bit lost when it came to religion. Then, a short while later, at the age of 24, Wilkinson came down with an illness, now believed to be typhus. Upon having a brush with death, the person completely changed. The public universal friend came out and insisted on being called this new name, saying the old soul had passed on to heaven. The friend also accepted shortened forms, which I've been using in this video. The friend and P-U-F. Some people pronounce this as puff, but I have not seen that confirmed anywhere, so I will be using it as an acronym, P-U-F. This new name is especially interesting when taken into account that Quakers usually call members that travel to different communities to preach public friends. So it was sometimes claimed that the name was a direct reference to this, with the friend being universal thanks to God's placing the genderless spirit in this body, and God's giving the friend this name. The public universal friend identified as a holy spirit, neither male nor female. As may be apparent already, the friend rejected the use of pronouns and any name used previously. The friend simply ignored any use of dead names or pronouns. Some close to the friend do use male pronouns for the friend. However, I cannot find if the PUF actually was okay with male pronouns or if this was the classic old school view of male pronouns are used for everyone I don't know the gender of. Much like they them pronouns are used now. I have neglected to use pronouns at all due to both this discrepancy, but also due to the repeated references to the friend's rejection of pronouns. The friend preached about rejecting sin and repenting to God. This was a common message within the Quaker religion at the time, yet the friend gained a lot of followers in this new branch of the Quaker faith, which sprouted from the PUF's teachings. The public universal friend traveled to local Quaker meeting houses to spread the ever-popularizing message. The friend, even beyond their own genderlessness, preached about women taking more of a stand in their community, taking the roles usually reserved for men. Within the society of universal friends, there were a lot of women in leading roles, which was an uncommon sight at the time, to say the least. It was fairly progressive for the time, which could be a reason why they gained so many followers. The first followers of the public universal friend seem to have been family members that were similarly thrown from the Quaker meeting house due to un-Quaker beliefs. It soon became more than just a familial affair, however. The PUF wore neutral clothing, which consisted of a traditional minister's robe with a cravat. The friend also wore a hat usually associated with men in the religious society of friends, instead of the bonnet associated with the clothing previously worn before becoming the public universal friend. 
The friend had women's shoes and long hair, usually associated with women, so it was a mix of clothes between two genders. The public universal friend spent years spreading the good word around Quaker meeting houses. Some years on, publishing a pamphlet about the friend's teachings called The Universal Friend's Advice to Those of the Same Religious Society. The pamphlet preached about abolishing slavery and often relied upon the Quaker faith for its sticking points, like pacifism. However, among paragraphs about spiritual growth and salvation, the pamphlet also said that obeying the friend's word was a key part of being saved. When going around to different Quaker communities, the friend is asked about their gender. The friend responds, There is nothing indecent or improper in my dress or appearance. I am not accountable to mortals. I am that I am. The friend often quoted Bible verses like this when asked about identity. When originally coming out as the friend, the PUF was known to respond to dead naming with, If thou sayest it, from the book of Proverbs, and that I am that I am line from Exodus when queried about gender. Eventually, the friend gained such a following in the Society of Universal Friends that the group traveled to New York and looked to make a community there called Jerusalem. The community was pretty communal with its property. The friend was said not to own items, so much as hold them in a sort of commune, often relying upon others and gifts from supporters. The friend even had been purported to not use a Bible when preaching. However, this can be said to be because of the PUF's strong memory and knowledge of Bible verses. With the coming of the friend and the friend's differences in identity and prominence in Quaker circles, there were a lot of people that were against the friend and the idea of the friend's rebirth. Those against the public universal friend often stated that the friend was delusional and falsely claimed that the friend believed the genderless spirit to be Christ, thus that the public universal friend claimed to be another coming of Jesus Christ, which is questionable at best as the friend never made such claims. There was even a trial held in 1800 against the friend with claims of blasphemy. However, this was thrown out of the courts due to separation of church and state, being considerably more in practice than it seems to be today. On the 1st of July, 1819, the public universal friend passed away with actual confirmation this time, unlike when Wilkinson passed. The friend was 66. It is said that some members of the Society of Universal Friends waited a few days after the friend's passing, as though expecting the friend to rise once more from the grave. However, no such third life occurred. The Society of Universal Friends did not continue long after the public Universal Friends' passing, due to the absence of the friend. I would personally assume this partially to be because of the weight put upon the friend's word, being seen as a sort of gospel while preaching. No confirmation on that, however. It's just my own thoughts on the matter. So, while Quakers still persist as a religious group, the Society of Universal Friends is no more. Now, while the PUF did not identify with the terms we may use these days to describe the friend, such as non-binary or even a gender, I think the friend did influence how society viewed gender. Society in the 17 and 1800s may not have held kind views towards the genderlessness of the friend and the friend's presentation. The Society of Universal Friends did view and refer to the PUF without a gender, or perhaps as close as a patriarchal society would come to such at the time. The fact that the friend made it into the history books as a genderless figure should not be viewed lightly. Many accounts of the friend are rife with incorrect pronouns even after the rebirth as the PUF, often citing insanity. So, that the friend is known at all to be a genderless self is I feel. A win. The Society of Universal Friends was quite small, with a congregation around 200 to 250 people, with members often remaining celibate. So the fact that the friend has been viewed by history with so much kindness as this is great to see. I have seen many a person be misgendered in death due to the carelessness and cruelty of those left behind to tell the person's story and how those people view the deceased. So despite many biographies claiming mental illness or just refusing to acknowledge the friend's identity in general, the friend lives on as a figure not only in Quaker history, but in queer history as well. I feel the friend's story is an interesting one, of coming out in hardship, 
it's an intriguing use of the Bible to back up being a genderless individual. The PUF is steadfast in rejecting the dead name and old identity, refusing to even acknowledge it, taking dead name to a whole different level. I think that How the Friend Lived was an interesting blend of historical queerness and religion. This was far from an extensive look at the public universal friend. There are many videos which dive even deeper into the friend's life, rebirth, and death. This level of research gets… interesting, due to all the outsider accounts of the PUF's life. I'll leave it to others to explain subjects like the Quaker religion more in depth, or the extent of the turmoil in the United States at the time. This is, as usual, just dipping a toe into the life and death of the person known as the public universal friend. If you have any other subjects about mental health or LGBTQIA topics you'd like to see covered, please let me know down in the comment section. As always, my resources are listed in the description down below. Thanks for watching the OCD MB. Stay safe out there.